right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. So we have, uh, we're gonna introduce a car, but it's not really a new car. I've had this thing for years. This is my 85 Mustang. Um, first car I actually bought myself. Um, had it since like 07, just uh, two weeks before I actually asked out my wife, Sammy, we've seen a few times and who's holding the camera right now. But um, but yeah, so it's it's been hanging around for years. It's uh, always been my kind of a project car. At first it was a daily driver, of course, because it was my first car. But, um, but yeah, so. <laughs> It's uh, now we took a racing the last time it was really out, and let me show you what happened. passed on the drag strip that was my first pass of that day um i had driven this all the way down to the drag strip which was a uh, barona out in san diego east county and um we went for that one pass and it actually blew a hole in a freeze plug in the back of the heads um so on these small block fords they have like a, a freeze plug in the front and the back of the heads and so on that head in the very back it actually had rusted through and blew out a little hole where it was just basically by the time I got back to like where we had made our little pit area it was basically just pouring cooling out of the back of the head on this thing and um, tried kind of getting to it with the engine in the car but it's so close with the firewall back here you only have like this much clearance it really wasn't I wasn't really able to get in there I probably could have done something to just change that freeze plug but what we're gonna do is uh, we're actually gonna do some upgrades while we're doing it um because I, I actually you'll hear it in that video actually too where i was kind of having trouble getting the clutch to grab um because basically the clutch that's in here is just an old clutch i had in an 86 mustang that i had pulled the transmission and everything out long story i've done a lot of different little projects on this thing and most of them have been on a really tight budget so let's wait for this plane to pass so what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna be pulling the whole engine out. Um, I have different heads we're gonna be putting in it. I got a different cam. Uh, we're gonna see about trying to get the engine out to a machine shop, having them just freshen it up, go through the bottom end, make sure we're, our bearings and our rings and everything are good. Uh, Cause we're gonna wanna play with this thing pretty hard here once I get it done. So um, we got a lot of other stuff actually we're gonna be doing too, but just as the, what we're doing right now, that's what we're doing. So. Let's, uh, let's go ahead, we're gonna get the fluids all drained out of this thing. Uh, probably not gonna be much cooling in it because like I said, it just pours right out. So um, let's get under this thing, get it drained, and we're gonna start by taking out the transmission. All right, so you can see kind of all this is all the stuff that was coming off of those freeze plugs. You see all just the junk in here because there's a magnet on the end of the freeze uh, drain plug for the radiator. And so that's all just the metal that's been floating around in there. I tend to like to do because this is going to be a part for a few minutes and by a few minutes I don't exactly know how long but I like to keep as much of the hardware as I can kind of where it goes that way I forget where it goes so this is a little bit of a surprise. I uh, didn't know, but I opened this drain plug for the oil and look at all this water coming out. So yeah, it's a good thing we're planning on pulling this engine because there might've been some deeper problems in here, which may not be good for later. Or maybe it's fine, I don't know. All right, so we got Sammy's gonna do some helping. She's a little cleaner than I am at this point, so go ahead, yeah, try and twist off that knob. That way, right? Or my way? Yeah, well, counterclockwise. So it looks like you're going the right way. Okay. <laughs> there it goes. Did I need that too? 
it'll come up. It should just spin off, yeah. That's mm -hmm. basically the thing to where you stop it so that way the shift pattern looks right when you're in there. Yeah, you, know, you can just set it aside. And then go ahead and pop the, so see how around the shifter, it's like a separate piece looking. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and pull up on it. I think you pull up on the, not on the leather, pull up on the plastic around oh, the right leather. Here. There you go. So it'll just pop right out. Oop, careful. And yeah, now the boot done. should just come out. It's kind of a fat boot. I kind of had to squeeze it in there. I just gotta get past this light. There we go. What? There's a light in there. I'm getting the light. Oh, yeah. So for you guys watching, um, if your stick shift car isn't quite like this, that's because ours wasn't automatic and I converted it over to a stick. So we kind of made some stuff work. I don't know if the manual consoles are different or, or whatnot, but this is how I made ours work. There we go. So now I see how there's two bolts on the far side of the shifter. Yes. So you're gonna take those two out and okay. then the shifter handle and then the little plate thing will come out. Okay, can you give me tools? Wait, what size do you think it is? Um, it looks like, is it gonna mean? It's probably gonna be American. Okay, um, I'm thinking a 12. You think, what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, include that. Um, 716. You think 716? Yes. Let's see, where do we have a 716 here? She handed it to me when I was underneath. Oh, it's over here. And when you're doing an engine jump, say goodbye to your clean concrete. Nope. Three eighths. So it's smaller? Is it bigger? Bigger. Then it's metric, it's a 10. 80s cars. No, it would have been bigger than a 716 then. Oh, okay. Now wait. Which way are you going? Oh. Ah. Yeah. So, trick. Hold on. Okay. So the trick's gonna be and it might hurt your hand, so I might just do it, is if you just kind of go in there, look what I'm doing, and go pop. Okay. That's gonna be the way. But just be careful of where everything's pointed so that way you don't hit your hand or the okay. interior. So I'll just break loose the other one while you're there. And then they'll both just come out easy after that. Then the hard part's done. Again, be careful when you're like doing too much like that. Wait, wait, wait. I wouldn't do that because you're going to just punch the gauges. Okay. You're going to hurt yourself and break stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here, check this out. Hold on. I'm just trying to get around. I'm going to take the first bolt out because it's in my way. Okay. More that. So for those that may not have seen it in the video, what did you just learn, Sammy? How, how, what's the easy way to take the bolt out or to break it loose anyway? I use the shifter to help me with the leverage. Show us how you did it. So, go like this. You set them next to each other. Well, now it's kind of off a little. And then, so say it was here. And then I force this this way and this this way to loosen it. But I was using the shifter as my leverage point.
Well, transmission's out. Sun's out in full force too. So we got the shade up here. And now just kind of taking apart all the wiring and all the little stuff on the engine before we actually get to pull it out. Well, seems like it's about time to start yanking this thing out. Bad thing is, we gotta lose our shade because we gotta go higher than the shade's gonna go, I'm sure. So, let's see how this goes. All right, so we got the engine out. Now I'm just gonna be taking off the clutch, flywheel, all that good stuff so I can put it on an engine stand so I can clean it up and take it apart and all that stuff. But one thing I noticed, so I told you how it had that, the freeze plug that ended up rusting through and making a hole. So that's this one right here. So you can see it, you know, it's one of the steel ones. That's probably why it did it, not the brass ones. The brass is always better. You can see all the rusty here. And if you got really close, you'd probably end up being able to see a hole. But what I was gonna show you is, see how this one's nice and clean and silver looking and all that? Well, if you look over at the other one here, it's all dirty. So what I'm wondering happened is if, before I got a hold of this engine, if maybe something happened to this one, someone replaced this freeze plug with like some sort of cheapy one or whatever, and then um, now I'm having problems with it. Maybe, I don't know, but it's kind of weird that that one's awfully clean and that one's not. day we got the engine out there on a, on a stand it's out of here now we got a, a big hole with uh, more upgrades to come it's gonna look at, uh, quite a bit different than this in a little while but uh, that's all we're gonna do for today really we're just gonna get cleaned up put everything away maybe clean up that engine a little bit next time what we're gonna do we're probably gonna go ahead and tear that engine kind of apart look inside of it see how worn it is um, it's actually it was out of a, another car when I put it in this car so I really have no idea how many miles are actually on it um, the, the pan and stuff was oddly clean, so maybe it's low miles, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but again, uh, that's all we're going to do today, so join us next time on Tacker Garage for more Mustang Project. Uh, pretty excited to get this one started. we got a big one for you, so I hope you keep tuning in. We'll see you next time on Tacker Garage.